Mexico. It's great to be back in Mexico. You can see the uh, cathedral down there. We just walked back up from down there. And it's like we've been on a Stairmaster for 20 minutes. So that's super bueno. Because we've got, I've probably had uh, 10 plates of chili quile since I've been here. So the more ejercicio, the better. Hey, look, some steps. You interesante? You want to do some stepping? I don't know if that's a yes or no. Let me follow her and see. Oops, looks like a big no. But still, we're going up. I don't know if you could tell how down that is or how up that is. But my heart knows. You're listening to our podcast, the Slowpoke Travel Podcast. We hope you enjoy our podcast. The podcast starts right now. Slowpoke Travel Podcast with Buck and Camera Girl. Ta-da! Alrighty, welcome to the Slowpoke Travel Podcast. And we are in... What's the name of this part? Que Benito Juarez. And we are in San Miguel de Allende, Mexico. Mexico. With the butterflies, bees, and hummingbirds right here in this little garden. Well, even where we're staying, there's a ton of hummingbirds. And yeah, but they're feeding. I haven't seen butterflies. Yes, they, they're right across from you, son. No, I'm saying where we're staying. Oh, okay. But you know all that stuff is around because we can feel it in our noses. <laughs> I mean, we have been smacked down by the allergy bug or something. I mean, it, it was, was it right when we got here? Yeah. I think even when we were in Carretero, yes. uh, we flew in, we flew in from Florida to Carretero and we spent a couple of days in Carretero, Mexico at some Airbnbs. All righty, there's the courtyard outside. This is our first Airbnb in Mexico. It's kind of large. We went a little extravagant. I guess I could walk up these stairs. This is my first time walking up here. In fact, I won't go all the way. This is as far as I'll go. Because we don't need that desk and chair. Or anything like that. Because we're going to be packing up and leaving here tomorrow. But the bed's too big. I guess this is a king size bed. Although I don't think it's a king size lengthwise, but it's definitely something or other. It's awful wide, but these walls are stone. So if you hit your head on these walls, you won't survive. I had to put this jacket and hang it up right here uh, so that if I, I hit my head right there, well, so that I wouldn't hit my head right there because you can see that's iron and yeah, it's a death blow. That's a definite death blow. Right there. Uh, there's a heater that they have in here. And there's also a fan. You know, if it gets too hot or too cold. Because they don't have a central AC or heat. Uh, there's also uh, this door. Which is pretty secure and seals pretty well. So we can close this at night and it's kind of quiet in there. Because it's kind of noisy here because it's a main road out here. Uh, but a ginormous kitchen with, boom, bottled water. It's even got a hot water button on the side. What? It's crazy. But you want to make sure you got bottled water when you're in Mexico. Unless you don't need it. I don't know. We stayed at a couple places last time we were in Mexico that had uh, filtration systems built into the uh, building. You know, part of the uh, pipes, plumbing. Uh, but most places, almost exclusively, we've always drank bottled water and in Mexico, I think that's uh, pretty much required. Um, but we got all of the stuff that we don't need because we're going to be—we're only here for one night. This is too fancy for us. We're going to have to go into a small. Look, <laughs> camera girl's like, we deserve this. It's not a matter of deserve. It's we were in Cuenca. We had a big space that we didn't need. Yeah, but it was a small price. This is a big price. It's an okay price. This is a el precio grande. Anyway, but anyway, this this here we're just staying here for a couple of days. We got we flew into Querétaro, and so we knew we were going to be tired. So we said, "Well, we'll just splurge." I mean, there's literally 
what is it? There's probably 15 feet over my head that we're not even using. What do we need this 15 feet of air? It's just too much air. Uh, one thing I like is the airflow in Mexico because things, you know, there's a lot of gaps. So there's very little to separate you from the outside in some places. Although this isn't too bad here, but any kind of uh, rattlesnake or uh, cobra, scorpions, anything like that could get in. So between the sharp granite and uh, the black mambas and that deadly iron staircase over there, probably won't survive this Airbnb, but we're enjoying it. It's right in downtown Caretro, which is fantastic because you can walk there. This is our first toilet in Caretro. Caretro in Mexico. I uh, don't see any signs saying you can't flush the toilet paper. And it didn't say anything in the listing saying you couldn't, so this place seems pretty upgraded, so we've been flushing the toilet paper, although our experience is that you don't flush toilet paper. Uh, but we've seen a couple places where you could, but I've been in one restaurant, an older one, where you know they had the little garbage can next to the toilet to put your toilet paper in. But anywho, that's it. Uh, reporting for the Drew Network from Querétaro, Mexico. Buck Red Buck. Help. Well, one I think I started be. feeling it there. Oh, I did. And I even took a couple of allergy pills, which I do not care to do. But I haven't taken any for the last few days. But man, when I get up in the morning, I have to dig the blood okay. out of my skull just so I can breathe. People have had allergies before. I know, but you haven't had the kind where you have to dig yes. blood out of your skull Lord you you, don't, you haven't had to do that i mean i blow my nose and it looks like a csi episode okay all right let's get past being a two-year-old blood and doo-doo and <laughs> let's not no don't don't do it anyway we're sitting in the park and we're just going to uh record some stuff here and see if this turns into an interesting conversation no. where we might where we might say something <laughs> that works but uh this is the environment that we're in so you might hear some uh, children laughing. You might hear some uh, older them. people tripping and falling. All right. You hear the morning doves? No, I don't. You might hear that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of uneven rocks and uh, <laughs> bricks and stuff. And but there's a lot of beauty. There's there is a lot, lot of beauty. beauty. You know, like there's this this fellow over here. He's on a uh, what are those things called? I'm not sure because it's a scooter, right? Yeah, it's, it's a motorized it's scooter. It's some kind of scooter, but he's not going. He's not going to make it to the end of the day. Oh my lord! He what is. on these on these cobblestones and bricks? Oh. I mean, it, I say that in all of our videos about Mexico where we're walking around. Because you think you're Mr. Safety, but you're Mr. Woody Allen. You're like <laughs> everything we, bad going to happen. <laughs> well, we've seen a lot of people with canes. We've seen a lot of people with those boots on their feet. You know what? We've seen a lot of people that are older than we are, and they are doing oh, their thing. Oh, my gosh. You said that the other day. They about, are doing um, their thing. About how impressed you were with the, the older crowds here, and how they were walking around and getting around, and how you wanted your mother. You know, that, that would be good for her. And I mean, it takes a little bit of gumption, I think, to go to a foreign country when you're you know, in your 70s or early 80s? I want mom to experience a walkable place because she tries to stay active, but sometimes where she's at, it's difficult. Here in a place like this, like what, last night we were restless. We just rambled around a couple of squares. <laughs> Oh yeah, we went out for the first time last night. We've been uh, we've been here in San Miguel for how long now? Probably about. We got here on Tuesday, um, so we've been here almost a week. Oh no! Oh, oh no, it is no, a week. Yeah, yeah. a week. It and is that, a week. It's been a week since we've been at our house. It. We got here two days after we. So I'd say we've been here for 10 days or 12 days, or we're coming yeah, up on two weeks. Two weeks, because Sunday will be the day that we flew in. Oh, okay. So tomorrow will be two weeks. Wow, that's something. 
and we have done a lot of walking we've done a lot of sniffling I forget what my <laughs> point was well no you were talking about the walkability and then you were talking about last night we took a walk for the first time the weather um, is can be 30s at night now oh it's in the God. 40s and it's then it's brutal well we find we don't like the cold as much we're wusses about the cold yeah. however and then it can be like right now it's like 82 and so we want to find shade and it's beautiful yeah there's but, a big swing in temperature between the yeah. evening between the, the middle of the night and the middle of the day I think it gets down into the uh, upper 40s right now and it's gonna get almost to 90 but the thing is a lot of homes in Mexico older homes you know if you're in the older area they don't have central AC or heat. You know, you can leave your windows open all the time. In fact, a lot of times the way uh, houses are built in Mexico, they're not really very airtight. So you can really feel the elements. You say that, but see, I think they're pretty well insulated. You've got um, straw and mud <laughs> on the inside. Sure. But why do you think the, the bottom floor of where we're staying stays so cool no matter because what? Because there's three stories on top of it. And yes, it's in the but, shade all the time and in the shadow all the time. And yes, the walls are very well insulated. But you know, mm -hmm. when you close a door, it's not unusual to have a half inch or a one inch gap. Now that's true. Between there, you know. That's the wind true. goes whistling through those doors like uh, David Letterman's voice. What? That's a gap teeth reference. Oh. Was that a reach? Mm. Yeah, it definitely was. But. But. It is cold in the morning. I don't even want to get out of bed. No, you don't. You know, and the no. thing is, we didn't, well, I don't know what time did I get out of bed, 8.30 today? It I was freezing. Pretty cold in the house. What would you say? I would say it's in the 30s downstairs. Uh, maybe and then upper as you 40s go up, now. Because we're house sitting and there's the first floor, second floor, then there's a third floor, and then there's kind of like a fourth floor mirror door in a very narrow home that kind of crawls up there's homes on either side mm -hmm. it's connected it's almost like a townhouse situation although it is well insulated you don't hear things through the walls yeah but as you as you as you go from level to level the temperature changes drastically yeah and we do have a space heater we could use yeah and they and they have an oil heating system but like they said it's sort of complicated to get to use and I remember being little and we had a, um, a gas and oil heater and yeah, you wanted to be careful when you were lighting the pilot light and you didn't let too much oil just sit and blah, blah, blah. So I'm fine with us just wearing layers inside. Yeah, we're not going to experiment with some heating system mm -mm. that we don't mm -mm. know much about. I don't like being cold, but I love being alive. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll go with that route. But, but, so Corretro and San Miguel de Allende are both extremely walkable which well, is some high area on our of list. Caretero is we stay we had an Airbnb down in the, oh, in the, the historic colonial. central yes. colonial yes, area yes, yes, yes. of Caretero and it was very walkable and it had a more traditional Mexican feel and we really enjoyed it but to get to that area you know going from the airport into Caretero which is about I mean, 30 minutes yeah yeah Uber there's some butt ugly oh. stuff there I mean it's very uh, cookie cutter you know, and they have a lot of new uh, apartments, yeah, new buildings, because yeah, yeah. it's the city has really grown rapidly in the last few years, I think, because of industry moving in. Uh, so it's great for the economy in Caretero, I think. But it sure does not make for an attractive uh, Mexican experience. You know, when you're coming down to Mexico and you think, you know, you want to see these beautiful churches, and you want to see these yeah. beautiful homes, and you want to see these cobblestone streets, and you just want to see... You know, what you imagine or picture, you know, the romantic view of Mexico is going to be. But then when you are going into Carretero, you basically just see an urban city that you would see anywhere. And I don't know how walkable it is. You're right, around not around the airport. It's never walkable around an airport. But um, And you're coming in, you're on, you're basically on you know, four and six lane roads. Maybe not six lanes, but that, I mean, it, were, it yeah. felt like it felt like just you know being in Tampa or someplace like that. It just felt like wall-to-wall -wall traffic, you know, kind of backed up. You know, I don't know if it was rush hour, if that's the way it always is. But again, Buck, how often do you like to drive? Never. I do not I want would to never drive. Never like to drive I, again. Yes, exactly. That's one of the reasons I love coming to Mexico because you know we can get to where we're going, and 
then we we're able to live and exist for long periods of time without having to get in a car That's we don't right. even really use the buses it's fun to walk everywhere mm -hmm. but i think depending on where you're at in caretro how you're going to need a car but not if you were in that colonial area no, i think we had not. there was even a hospital you know old people talk but i made sure i knew where a hospital was <laughs> that's the first thing we do when we get to a place is we look for the no 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 i do that before is. we leave it i had watched enough travel blogs you know it's just great how much information is out there that you can look at and see what resonates with you and just so many people just said don't wait until you get there just go ahead and you know, don't put a lot of effort like, oh, what if something bad happens? But just figure out where the consulate is and figure out where the hospital is or a medical facility that that has emergency facilities and just know. So, yeah, we already knew that. And am I a hypochondriac? It seems like every time we travel somewhere, initially, I have some kind of health crisis. Is it because I'm Woody Allen? Not or is it because always. I'm falling apart? No, it's not that either. But... I think it is easy for any of us to not pay attention to our health. Do you know what I mean? It's like you sort of ignore it. You think, oh, it's like when you're 20 and you can eat anything it, ridiculous. Oh, my God. And you can just get away with it. And I think as we get older, yes, if you ignore some things and then you make a, you go to a different culture, it doesn't matter how clean or dirty it is it's a different bacteria that you're around and so your immune system is it's already like you already have me sort of working then it works harder so that's the long-winded way of saying no i don't think you're always a hypochondriac although how many times have you taken your blood pressure <laughs> well the in thing the is, last three days no, is, just answer my that blood question. pressure is a little high just i mean answer my, that my question. blood pressure is elevated right now yeah I've, how many I've, times i've been monitoring it no the, the no, last no that's not what days. i asked you how many times in the last three days? Uh, maybe 12 times. I took it like six I... times yesterday and six times today. Uh -huh. I've, got, okay. I've got a list. We can count. And then and then the day before, in the last three days. Yeah. And I think every now and again, if you go by the machine, you test it a couple more times. So I think it's more like 25. Yeah. 25 times well, in the last well, three Well, my days. blood pressure is high. My blood pressure is high right now because, I mean, I talk about how much I enjoy the chili quiles here yeah, in Mexico that's true. and we hit the ground here in Mexico <laughs> and I think my first seven meals were chili quiles which is basically Salt, a plate of fried, fried. tortillas yep. and you know the food in Mexico is delicious but it's also salty so I'm eating a lot of chips like I'm eating us. a lot of we're oil and salty. salt in fact we were buying some cans of uh, oh. beans and what else did we look at and it actually says on the Salsa. label. Salsa. You know, you don't see anything that says low sodium. It does. And it, it doesn't even say nothing. It's not even plain. Like a lot of these cans actually say excess, excess sodium. Excess sodium. Yeah, they're saying, <laughs> they're, they're like warning you. This can <laughs> has a lot of salt in it. Which is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but, but we're, we're changing a little bit of that. Now we've been here for a little bit of time and we've got some fresh veggies because again, like a lot of the walkable places we enjoy so much the mercados that i know you're already sort of well you knew before we came that this was going to be a little more expensive this is a little more touristy than even some other places we had been yeah. but it is great to be able to go to these local markets or these little fruterias and you can get vegetales and um so we've been doing a little more of that yeah we have been spending a little bit more money than we did on our last trip to mexico Mm -hmm. And what was it, 2019? We sort of expected it. I mean, it's been five years since we were in Mexico. Yeah, 2019. Uh, yeah. But we are in San Miguel de Allende, which is one of the more expensive areas in Mexico. You have a huge expat community here. I think maybe 10% of the population are gringos and expats, and a lot of uh, the industry, tourism industry here in, in uh, San Miguel is centered around expats and it's very expensive uh, I say very expensive but it is on par with a lot of things that we spend on in the US that's true I think we get more value for our money for sure here yes yeah but oh, <laughs> we went to uh, I don't know what the grocery store is I'll try to put a picture up I'm going to put um, uh, videos a uh, little snippets and uh, some photographs and stuff uh, over our podcast so you can get some of the scenes but one place we went to what was the name of that market you're talking about um, it was off in a kind of a Gringolandia area 
it got into an area where you would have to drive. We walked there from El Centro, but it had a huge parking lot. And I think most of the people that were in there shopping were gringos, and they oh, had all driven city, there. City market, and it was, are you talking about the supermarket? Yeah, the, the, the supermarket. La, La Comer at City Market. Fish in a sushi bar. There's a restaurant back here. This is, this is a grocery store. Everything is beautiful. All the shelves are perfect. It is amazing. Is that Mercado the nicest these grocery store you've ever been in? Suede de... No, how do you, no, wait, city. Don't try to talk Spanish on Ciudad. this podcast. All right, all right. Because we... Because it'll hurt people's yeah. ears. <laughs> well, yeah, we it was a little it. spooky by the time we left because it was, it was pristine, it was clean. I mean, Publix are pretty clean, and so are Whole Foods in the United States. But this, there was nothing out of place. Yeah, this market was perfect. And it had, and it had like, what, 10 specialty stores. Like it had a cafe, it had a restaurant that was a little frou-frou yeah. in there. It had a sushi bar. They had a sushi with thing with a giant aquarium in Aquarium the middle in the middle, exactly. It was a tube of live fish. Then there was, oh, their chocolate, their sweet section was oh, it by was itself. Perfect. And then they had a pond. They had a bread section, yeah. so that was just the non-sweet bread. Yeah, they well, had everything that a grocery store would have. Plus, it was, it was but it the was best, intense. Not the best. It was the most impressive. Well kept. I mean, literally every shelf was fronted. Yeah, it was just... It seemed like a not movie sorta. set. Yeah, it was it a did. movie set. It was it like was. Tim Burton's version of a... Not Tim Burton, that's not right, because it wasn't weird. It was just... Well, it was sort of spooky, because you go into a grocery store and you think, okay, there's going to be... People have grabbed something off the shelf, yeah, but yeah, there's yeah. like these people wandering around, and if you take something... <laughs> yeah, they're putting they had back. a lot of staff in Anyway, there. but that was fun. It, but, but that the, was fun. What was my point? I think my point was something. How expensive. You were talking yes. about on par. And I don't think it was overly expensive if you're coming from the U.S. or Canada. And if it was Publix or Whole Foods. Yeah, or but maybe. I mean, it was exactly what you would pay in the United States. But maybe a tad less on some things, but certainly a tad more on other things. On other things. Yeah, it was not a cheap supermarket. But it was beautiful. And the and, yeah. uh, produce. and Anyway, yeah, we did enjoy that. But what it we enjoyed more... It was beautiful, and we did not buy anything. No. <laughs> but the other thing is then on the way back, coming back back along that stretch they had that great combination of more local places and then a few um change what was the name of that road the big one that, where you had oh, your I had no favorite idea. I, um, I, I can't tell you the name of the roads in his in and this i had yet. concha we've only been here for two weeks so i still don't know where i'm at but i remember when we were here in 2019 and i would go to the atm machine you know and draw out a little bit of money you know so that we have cash because we all we Exclusively spend cash. We really haven't swiped our credit cards at all since we've been here. But I remember we we would get uh, 500 peso notes, and it was a pain in the butt. I didn't like getting a 500 peso note, and you would try to find. Well, we could a, if we went to a bigger grocery store, we could spend it. But yeah. you're right. Yeah, you a would, lot of you the would local... look for that opportunity yeah. where yeah. you could bust up that 500, so you could have some smaller denominations to use, you know, for other purchases. But here in San Miguel, <laughs> right now, I mean, you can bust a 500 peso note almost everywhere Over, we go. Offer, after coffee and pastries. Yeah, a lot of times. And, you know, <laughs> we're, we're trying to not, you know, we, we like to, we're slow poke travel. We like to travel slow, but we're also some kind of cheap travel, too. I like to, you know, be as thrifty as I can. I don't know. I just enjoy stuff when it doesn't cost as much. I like to get, the more value I get for my money, the happier I am. <laughs> I'm happy to spend money. I mean, if, if we go out and we spend, you know, $75 one day, I'm fine with that. You know, that's, that's great, but I don't want to, spend, I don't want to spend it all on one meal. You know, I want, if I can make it last the whole day, <laughs> it's not like I'm trying to spend less. I mean, like, let's figure out the maximum budget we have, and then we can spend it all. You know, max that out. I'm not trying to be as cheap as possible. 
but I want the most bang for my buck. And it's it's just harder here than it was in 2019 in the other places that we were at. We were in Puerto Vallarta, but we weren't there long enough. But when we were in Guadalajara and Morelia and uh, Guanajuato, yeah. uh, really, we our money went a long way. We were eating a lot for, I mean, it wasn't unusual for us to, to both get a, a full meal and everything that we wanted for between 10 and $15 including tip and it wasn't unusual for us to spend less than ten dollars right but here now at this time a few years later in more expensive San Miguel de Allende I think we are easily spending uh, between three and four hundred pesos for breakfast and we've even gone a little bit over that too sure. so so we're looking at really between twenty and thirty dollars but there's also this time we're not eating as often as late, and this is the same as before. After seven is when you can go and the street vendors are all out and you can get a couple of tacos and you can get different things. That yeah. we, not that you can't find it during the day, but there are these places that are just so popular with the locals. You, you know, you feel like, yeah, let's try them. But we're not eating as late. Yes, and that's, and that's and true. That, and we're that's not eating too. street food. We we're haven't not, been We're not yet. eating uh, cart food. We're going to sit-down restaurants, and it's a great value. I mean, in some ways, we're spending as at, we're we're eating. We're spending comparably to what we do in the U.S., but we're definitely getting more for our money in terms of ambiance and service. Oh, you love it because you get a real cup for your uh. coffee. I you tell you, you so know, I just funny. get a uh, spoil. I'm just not interested in a paper cup of coffee anymore. It's true, you're not. But the other thing is, just traveling, even even here where there's a lot of expats, we are in an area that is not. It's mixed, which is nice, and we've got an Airbnb later where it's a little more Hispanic, which is oh, great. Yeah. yeah. But just going to a different culture and just knocking yourself out of your own routine. Um, the people are so lovely and yes you can find lovely people anywhere but it does seem there's just more people that you know will talk to you and our Spanish is still abysmal but they will try and um, so even with just to come and even though there are some things that are comparable I'm still enjoying it as something different of course there's different plant life there's different spices people use but just being able to walk, we, you're right, we had been in Central Florida, and there are things to love about it. We have family and friends there, but... It's not walkable. It's not walkable compared to a place like this where day or night you can just go out. And again, I feel very safe here. I mean, again, be, be aware as in, in any city. But um, this is a very easy to be in city, as was Correto. And it was, I think, a little less expensive, too. Well, our, our experience in Querétaro was just two days. That's true. In the uh, colonial that's area. So, that's but, true. That's true. But we liked it. We would go back to Querétaro and, and uh, experience more of that to see what we really think about it. But we're definitely enjoying San Miguel, but it is not the, um, not the budget trip to Mexico, for sure. It's not the budget trip, but again, you can ramble around. If you have work you want to do, you can do some work. Our Wi-Fi has been okay. Yeah, yeah It's yeah. not been like speedy, speedy, but... And maybe we'll find more budget options when we move to our Airbnb in a different neighborhood. That's true, Because right too. now we're house-sitting. We're very close to El Centro. Uh, we've got another house-sit coming up in a little bit that's also very close to El Centro. It's just a wide swath in the middle of the city that is very walkable, and very expensive and we really haven't found any super duper cheap places except for what was the place you took us to yesterday <sighs> the breakfast place where yeah. you and i met yeah it was in the you had to walk through the um, door that said uh cigars see they didn't even have the name of the restaurant outside no they didn't but we walked inside and there was nothing to indicate there was a restaurant there at all and i walked up to the second floor and uh, it was just kind of a, it wasn't fancy or anything, but we had a really good meal there. Mm -hmm. And good the service. total cost for both of us was 185 pesos. How do you remember that? For breakfast, because it was the least expensive oh, uh, breakfast tip, yeah. that we have had yeah. since we got here. And so it really stood out. And that was 
what is 185 pesos? That's probably around $10 or a little bit more. And I think that was our kind of near our norm when we were in Guadalajara five years ago. And I know everything's more expensive now. In the U.S., prices, you know, from five years ago to now are, there's they bear very little resemblance. There's a lot of funky little theaters and yes. art spaces in San Miguel. And I think that's going to be terrific to explore during the time we were here. In fact, I've already got uh, tickets to two different shows and they're both going to be very walkable from where we're at. And they're both very different shows. One of them is going to be like a, a comedy show that I think is going to be targeted towards expats. It's going to be in English, I hope. <laughs> and then the other the other event we're going to is a musical it's event. Opera. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be some opera. And... Bucho's Opera uh, what? instead I'm of folk music. Man. Come on, uh, with a name like <laughs> All righty, let's don't torture anybody. All right. Um, Nebulosa. But yeah, I'm, that's just the tip of the iceberg. I'm going to try to get us out and do some different kinds of stuff. And I think, Maybe. you know, that's, I think the tickets I got for both of those shows were about 25 bucks per person. So we're, we're ended up spending 50 bucks uh, to go to a show. So we'll see what kind of shows they are. I think they're very, um, let's put on a show type shows. What, what does that mean? Little Rascals? That's, you yeah, meant... sort of like small black box theater type shows. I mean, they're not big op. You know, it's not like Broadway or anything. It's it's sort of on par with what we experienced in Seattle. Remember when we were living in Seattle and there was the little theaters everywhere? There was the one that was right off of... Oh, uh, yes, 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 yes. And you're right. the streets are. And the, they, we haven't found a central location for a lot of events, but it's just as you say, as we go along, we can take pictures of calendars we see out or yeah. posters. Um, there have been a few mu museos, museums museos? that we go through. Yeah. that then they advertise different events and um, the public library, which we haven't actually, I haven't been inside. You yeah. ordered a couple of tickets from, anyway. Yeah, it's, it's there's something attached sponsored to a little by, theater where we're going to yeah. see a show. So that's the other great thing that we're enjoying so far is it's lots of cultural, cultural stuff. Cultural stuff. Yeah. Oh. But we're enjoying the, uh, the weather here, although it's, so freezing, but so hot in the day. But we're in this, <laughs> we're in this nice, cool park right now. I guess yesterday we took our first siesta. Oh, that is true. And wasn't that? Oh, that looks like a monarch butterfly. Where? Over there. Oh, that's not going to show up. No. <gasps> yeah. Maybe he'll come closer. No, he didn't. Have you taken any allergy medicine? No. Yeah, I haven't for a few days now. Well, we might be getting acclimated now. Yeah, but uh, I saw on the on the weather report uh, on our phone app it said that uh, the pollen count has been high ever since we've been here, and it's February coming on the end of February, and we've just been sniffling, and hopefully that'll pass. We're going to be here for a few months. Yeah, I think it'll pass. But sniffling or no sniffling, we're having a great time. Yeah, it is definitely nice to be back in Mexico. Although, did we take our first siesta yesterday? Yes. Did I just say that? Yes. Jeepers creepers, man, I tell you. <laughs> What's the elevation here? It's 5,000 okay. something yeah, feet? Yeah, that's Almost 6,000 feet? Why don't you say it's because of your stuffy head? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got allergies. We're at a higher elevation, and I can feel the lack of oxygen in this general area. <laughs> and if you're not looking at the video, I'm indicating my head. <laughs> But I think once we get out of the park here, once we get out of the shade, we'll probably just ramble on home and, and try the siesta thing again. Well, I got some work I gotta do and but yeah, we can relax during the hottest time of the day and Yeah. So come back out. I don't think we really said anything. <laughs> but uh like I said, uh, you know, I'll put up some pictures and some information with some menus and some prices on some foods and stuff that we got. And uh so maybe that'll that'll help to make this a little less uh you know, if you have an outline, then we'd have some particular salient That's thoughts true. to cover. Coming soon in the future. An yeah, outline. sure. I think we've mentioned that a few times. All righty. Well, that's it. We appreciate you uh, listening and watching and doing all that stuff. And uh, coming from San Miguel de Allende to wherever you are. 
Hoping you're having a good one. Yep. Hope you have a fantastic weekend, and we'll talk to you in the future. Bye-bye. Alrighty, that is it. We wrapped it up. Another fantastic podcast to add to our fledgling podcast canon. So if you enjoyed it, uh, click, subscribe, review, share all over the global internet sphere. Uh, check out the links below, especially the one to Patreon. Because you can kick us a cup of coffee and it will be much appreciated. So thanks for listening and we will see you next time on the Slowfolk Travel Podcast.